All right, we are live with another stream here at the Snowboard Project. I'm Mark Sullivan, and this is another watch party, a really special edition, I'd like to say. We got we got some snow last night here in Alaska, and uh, still August, at least for one more day. But, uh, you know, winter is coming, snowboard season is coming, and what better way than to get you stoked with uh, watching some of the historical snowboarding movies from the past. And today we have a special one for you. We have Seventh Year. So Seventh Year was one of the first, um, one of the first freestyle movies. And by that, I mean, um, you know, jibbing, street riding, spinning. It came out the same year as, I believe, The Hard, The Hungry, and The Homeless. And... And so, man, this movie really featured some of the first street riding in the history of the sport. We're going to get into that here with the guy who made the film. Before I bring him on, uh, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hit that bell, then you'll get notified every time we go live. Also, you can donate to help make more watch parties happen at patreon.com slash the snowboard project. Please consider donating. Uh, to the snowboard project. So anyhow, without further ado, I have Steve Blakely here. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Okay, let me, uh, You've gone silent on me. Let me bring up my preferences here, Steve. Okay. What's can that? Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. I think so. I'm here. How you doing, Steve? I'm good. How okay, are you? So we're, I'm good, by the way. Thank you for asking. Um, I, I felt like a telemarketer there for a second. Thank you for asking. Um, anyhow, Steve, where have you been for the last 30 years? Uh, dude, it's cutting in and out. I can't, I can't hear you all that great. You can't hear me all um, that great. Okay, hold on. Let me pull out my microphone. Is that any better? <laughs> Not really. I'm getting like, it's like a bad cell phone reception right now. You can hear me through the stream, but you can't hear me through the cell phone shit i hope it's not mine it well you know what these things on, we're, we're bound right. to have right. some problems with these things so um that <laughs> of course we're, we're just fine for like 30 minutes before this oh, yeah, too fully, right fully good for 30 minutes and can you hear me now um can you hear me now hang on let me mute and unmute can you hear me now can you hear me now i don't know Oh man! Hold on one second. We'll get there. Whoa! Yeah, we'll weird. get there. I think that I could hear. We'll get we'll there. Get there. Yeah, I think you might be okay, good. Okay, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Well, this is Steve Blakely. He's here with seventh <laughs> year. I haven't seen him in like thirty years. What have you been doing for thirty years, Steve? Uh, lots of things. Uh. Unfortunately, I haven't been doing a whole lot of snowboarding lately. Um, uh, things have moved pretty far away from that for me in this world. Um, currently, uh, I have a graphic design company in Denver, spending a bunch of time on that, um, working in the music industry a lot too still. Uh, all that DJ crap that I got caught into early on in snowboarding uh, basically took over my life, I'd say. So I've been pretty involved in that scene uh, in a lot of different aspects. So, okay. Yeah. So when did you retire from being like a professional snowboarder? Like what year did you like hang up the boots, so to speak? I think it was, I, I want to say it was 96 because uh, I kind of have a weird memory of that. I don't know why, because it was the year uh, I was starting to DJ at a bunch of shows a little bit more. Okay. Um, so I think in my mind I was doing that like, well, if I'm going to be washed up snowboarder, I may as well go be a super cool DJ. And uh that didn't work out exactly as planned either, but hey. You know. Okay. Well, let's trace your career a little bit here, because I think you had a really fascinating path that led up to making this movie. So you grew up in upstate New York. Um, yeah, Rochester. And how did you get into snowboarding? Like, what was your impetus to become a snowboarder? Yeah, it was actually pretty awesome. Um, uh, when I was, you know, whatever, 13 years old was when skateboarding was really blown up. Uh, the for whatever the early the eighties version of skateboarding was blown up, um, and uh, I would go downtown in Rochester and got to know um, the guy who owned 
you know, the cool skate shop, Samurai Skates, uh, this guy, Arthur Liu. And, um, I mean, he was like monumental in building skateboarding in Rochester. So he, I don't know, he was really great to me. Uh, you know, sponsored me from the shop, gave me some gear. Um, I ended up working there. Um, eventually, you know, they started carrying snowboards. So I got interested in the snowboarding factor, went out. I mean, I was like 14, 12, 13, I don't even know. Um, and got to know a bunch of the local guys. Uh, and by coincidence at the time, the, um, snow tech factory was in Rochester. So a lot of those snow tech guys were around and were super cool with me. Um, and then, uh, Ernie DeLost was in town and, uh, the barfoot, uh, factory moved to this, you know, to where the barefoot and snow tech factories were basically the right. same. And, uh, uh, Ernie was dope and someone was like, Hey, this kid's you know, super little and does these cool tricks and Ernie started flowing me boards. So it was kind of like my doorway into Barfoot and into sponsorship and all that stuff. So, uh, that's how, that's how you can be in Western New York and kind of get the hookup. You right. Know? And, and I met you for the first time, probably in new England. So you were driving, like how far was it to drive from <laughs> to new England cup events? Like when you were in Rochester? We would do anywhere from five to nine hours each way to go to all the New England Cup for a contests weekend, back then. On a Friday was, and a Sunday. Yep. Totally. Right. We would we would leave I'd probably I don't even know. I must have I guess I didn't skip school, but we'd probably get in at like, you know, midnight or two in the morning half the time before the you know, before the right. contest. Um, I remember my I was even like fifteen years old and my mom would let my friends borrow our minivan just to drive us to New England to go to contests. Really? Okay, so yeah. <laughs> but that was like me, it was like me and Matt Smith, uh, this guy Jonah DePasquale used to go with us a lot. Um, I don't, I mean, that was kind of like the core and then there was a bunch of people who would hop in and off on certain weekends from Rochester and head up there too, but uh, yeah. Okay, so you must have had some success competing because then you decided like, I'm gonna pursue snowboarding with my life and move to Colorado. At least for that. Yeah, well, I mean, I was super good for a little kid. <laughs> I don't know if I, uh, I mean, I, I made all my, I, I, I met everybody, got to know everyone, got to know the industry, you know, when I was, when I was younger, like little or younger. And then, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was just a lot of fun. And I think I was really good at just keeping my, I mean, <laughs> it sounds so lame, but I was just good at marketing myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I don't think I was ever like the greatest snowboarder by any means, but, uh, but I think I was good enough and kind of, uh, I don't know, just kept myself out there. It was, it was just fun. I don't know. It was a challenge for me to, to be a part of it. I okay. Think. So then how did you make the transition to become a filmmaker? Because, you know, I, I moved to Colorado, um, you know, out of high school and I met you there, but you were making seventh year at the time. And, you know, I thought you were just going to be like a guy who was sponsored, trying to make a name for himself. But you were the guy making the movie. How did that come? Like, how did that come to be? Did you get a Did you get a camera for Christmas? I mean, how did you become a filmmaker? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I distinctly remember being with like Swires and Rayberg and all those guys and talking about how uh, we were like we were doing this cool shit that no one else had done, and it was at the same time where every snowboard video at the time was this like 16 mil ultra produced, you know, Burton video. And that there was, you know, thousands of dollars pumped into all of them. And at that same time, skateboarding had just adopted doing like, shit, I got a little video camera. I'm going to film my friends and here's our each street video, right. you know? So we were like, well, these guys are doing it. We should do it. So, um, it really started as a group effort to make the seventh year. It wasn't, it wasn't like I decided to do it. I think a bunch of us thought it was a good idea. I think I was just the one who, uh, kind of hyper-focused on it and wound up kind of finishing it more than just starting it. Right. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I bought a, I bought a really terrible, what were those VHS C we were, were the compact, the compact VHS yep. ones where you film with little VHS tape. That was what the first footage was on. And then eventually I uh, saved up and, you know, must have gotten enough photo incentives to go out and, uh, and buy myself the Canon A1 digital, which was like, you know, almost the best camera that Canon had at the time. But by so. digital, it's not like modern digital. It's like it's still on a tape. <laughs> it was. Yes, it was. A, a, I think it was a high eight tape. I think that one took. Right. Yes. I mean, 
yeah far from far from digital by today's okay what was the editing process like because this wasn't like all digital you just turn on the computer open premiere and edit the movie this was something else nah yeah and this is kind of the sentimental part of the seventh year that's awesome is uh uh back then um doug burns uh his dad was um was uh, making you know videos for schools. I don't even really know. Whatever my comprehension of what Doug's dad did at that point was what I think of it still today. But uh, they had like the super high end video editing facility in his house in Connecticut, and uh, he's the one who invited me up there to do all the editing with him. And I mean, we did it on. I mean, you're you're transferring to like whatever it is one and a quarter inch tape i don't remember what those things are the tapes are like monstrous you know and then uh uh editing all you know you're marking times on all your tapes where you want to grab this clip and i mean we literally had just like notebooks with just like 13 minutes and 27 seconds of tape number seven is rowan rogers jumping off that fucking whale at copper you know and uh we I mean, we were just winging it all the way through. And then uh, he had video toaster, which is like, was at the time highest technology you could get. And that's why there are like 9 million really awful overused special effects in the seventh year. Cause it was basically us going like, dang, that looks cool. Let's put this weird effect on right. it. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we'll get into that here actually. Maybe right now. I think we should get into this movie right here. This is seventh year. Uh, one of the first freestyle snowboarding videos ever made by this guy right here, Steve Blakely. Let's get into it. Let's let's do it. All right. And by the way, guys, if you have comments, you can leave them on here and they will post up on the screen. So leave your comments and we'll try to address them. Gotta, gotta love the FBI warning. Uh, I, the, the, cause my friends have guns, uh, Commonly known as Tarquin Robbins. <laughs> right, commonly known as Tarquin. I'm not sure why the FBI had to be involved with that, but anyhow, Tarquin had a gun. Yep, yeah. Oh, there's the, uh, that was the Maybe the first cheese PK. wedge ever. Maybe. Yeah, PK kickers. I remember yep. those were. Those yeah. were like freestyle ski jumps, and when they melted out and the resort closed down, um, you know, Dale and Rowan and Nate reshaped them into like these cheese wedge jumps that were like, to my knowledge, like the first big cheese wedges ever. So, yeah, because you did have to clear a big flat, you know, before you hit the exactly, landing. Exactly, exactly. And a dude yeah. smoking cigs, you're not going to see that in a snowboard video anymore. <laughs> there's a there's a Gucci rock rocking like the first 720s, I think, right? <laughs> in the pipe almost like ever. Yes. There's like stump, lots of jump, lots of bonking, lots of jibbing on wood. Not a lot of metal jibbing yet. There's Matt Smith. Yeah, no, there was no metal. Remember the Breck Park that year was like, actually, I don't even know if they had a park yet that year, but for the first two years in the Breck Park, they wouldn't put any metal. It was just big logs, yeah. you know? With like knots on it, like sticking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of, there's the copper yeah. pipe, Bogdan. Oh, so smooth. Jibonking. Like, I think that, like, Bogdansky might be underappreciated for his style. Like, he just makes it look... Yeah, there he is. Yeah, it's just so smooth. Joe Bogensight, Joe Bogdansky. Man, respect. Uh, Nothing but respect there. Yeah. Rowan? And, of course, Rowan. I mean, really, this (laughs) is, like, the battle of style between Rowan and Joe, almost. And Nate. And Nate. Yeah, Nate was Nate. We just had a different little skater style, for sure. I mean, those those three guys really embodied style to me. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like you were saying too, though. It's like you know, nowadays you can't even do half of this stuff because your ankles won't bend. You know, right. now, this <laughs> might be like one of the first movies that Rowan filmed for. No. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yep. Yep. Stump of manhood. Uh, first yeah. comment. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, there you go. We had all just moved. I mean, this year was the year for some reason that the Midwest and the East Coast all descended on Summit County, like all at yeah. once, you know? I mean, at least a lot of it. Obviously, there's people before and after, but it was, it was a big year. There's Smitty with his big old hat. Yeah. <laughs> there's Joe again. Joe's easy to spot with the Sunset Bay jacket. Yep. You know, it's funny. He bought that jacket. I used to ride with Joe all the time, but he bought that jacket because Roach had that jacket at New Kids on the Twalk. <laughs> well, there you well, go. Here, I'm going to bring this oh. up a little bit. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it would be funny to take uh, clips of heavy metal and put it in right. here. I think. Uh... 
Yeah, interesting soundtrack you have here. Oh yeah, we went through and pulled some uh, some classics That's out. Me. So. I mean, I, of course, I cleared every song. Uh, believe yeah, me, I always do that. So awesome to do. <laughs> Ooh, the double stump! Don't forget the double yeah. stump. Oh, that was uh, Dale. Oh, well, not looking it. There's Sweeze yeah. right there. So smooth too. Sweeze had great style too. And Noah Brandon, speaking of the style, oh, yeah. and Mike Espy's obviously practicing great style. Espy's had some post on LinkedIn the other day, like I got a job at Taco Bell. Oh, I, no, no, he's not working at Taco Bell. He's just like throwing us off the, the scent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that's a yeah. I, I get yeah, that one. Nice, low, compact Bogensai. Yeah. And Rowan. And it's we seem to follow. It seems to go, <laughs> Joe, Rowan, Nate, in order, and all right. these. And this is what we wrote. I mean, this is called Mario Land, and so this was. Yeah. That was me. Oops. Um. Anyhow, that uh, Mario Land oh, was like a run that we did so a, many times. Oh shit! I'm not thinking. Justin Copper. There's random shots of me um, putting uh, Mac Dog's film crew in here too, because uh, I thought it would be funny. I know. I saw that. I saw John Krieg in here as well. Yep. Oh, that was Krieg. That's right. Krieg. That's who I was trying to think yep. of his name. Yeah, yeah. But this there is pretty go. much Ladders. like every day. Sham. This is the beginning of jibbing right here. So a lot of the time. We would literally. There's e here. That's e e that right was there. Me right there. Look at that eating shit. Oh man. Yeah. Thanks for holding that shot pants. and showing the doctor right there washing his hands. Thanks. Yeah. That was me. Great. Damn, we were pants you were rocking there too. I don't know why I found this shit so funny, but it's just like. Yeah. <laughs> just Rowan, just not able to walk. Yeah, up so the he's hill. gonna go around. <laughs> and then Nate just goes right up it like it's nothing. Yeah. More heavy metal. <laughs> Yeah, and boobs. You had a like, little boob. Boobs. Boobs. Like, like <laughs> if we put two frames in, no one will see it. <laughs> little did we know, it's like twenty frames actually. Right. Yeah, here's here's some of the fine. Uh... Yeah, what is up with this stuff? I was video just like, huh. Effects. Oh, this is a built-in effect for a video <laughs> toaster. Yeah, this was uh, Jason Ford renting a car, and they gave him the crappiest little car. I don't know where it's. I can't remember where this was. But yeah, there's a Gucci destroying the uh, owner's manual. Right. Teenage Gucci. This is this is the rebellious snowboarders wrecking shit. Right. Showing up at Round Table Pizza for all you can eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see how much we can rock the Geo. It's a Geo. Right. I noticed it was a Geo. I was like, huh, Geo. I was like, we go side to side or up and down. It's up to you. Okay, and then okay the, this section. Double, this is like double. the first cheese wedges right here. The combo. That's so sick, though. The 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 blind fakie to forward 180 was like huge back then. Off of jump that big. Yeah, and Nate doing it right there. There's yeah. Richie. Richie. Sigh. Yeah, Russell Winfield making an appearance. A little cameo. Yeah. I mean, there's just just about every airplane. Yeah. That's so sick, though. I know, just the style. And that's technique. John Bamboo Curtain. Whenever uh, someone would do something cool, I had this clip of him saying wonderful, so I thought it would be That's right. He was your sponsor, though, so you were, like, kind of doing double duty, stoking him out and stoking yourself out, sort of? Yeah, those guys were yeah. awesome. The John is cool. He, he lives in China now. You know that? Is he yeah. really? I haven't no, I, talk, I still am in touch with Gus and family, but there's Doug. Oh, yeah. Murphy. Oh, yeah. Hey, there's my yeah. one. John runs my a boot company. factory, so most of the snowboard boots made today are overseen by John in China. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> Early butter run. <laughs> but look, oh, curve over, get get the uh, stump, ollie over the stump. Look how awesome the half pipe was. <laughs> All hand dug, about six to eight feet deep. <coughs> oh my god, I don't even know who that was. I know, it was solid though, wasn't it? was Donahue, Matt Donahue on a, like a one twenty. Here comes Estes. This is yep. like flatland street riding. I don't know what this is. We thought we were being pretty cool, though. We thought these were tricks. Uh, gotta love it. There's oh, Brian. Yeah. So style. Dripping, smooth, so and sick. Joe as well. Yep. And Bob <laughs> Blair. Cool. What was Bob, Bob Blair. That was... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. It was something Bob, Bob Blair. He was, he was no, I know who that was. He, Bob he was Blair, like 15, yes. 15, 20 There's years older than us. He was like 36 and That's we were like 18, but he wanted to like get a yeah. part in the movie. 
dude, he would just sit and like play his guitar, and <laughs> that dude was hilarious. He was, he was a nice guy. He, I mean, he met well. So super nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of Rippy in here. Yeah, there he is again. Oh. I don't even know. Oh, skier in a wedge. Yeah. No. These were big airs at the time. Like that was like a sender huge. right there. And like, and the thing is, I that saw this huge. in one of the in runs where it like literally you show the whole in run because it's like you're holding yeah. on with for your speed the whole way just over the chatter and chop or whatever just to make it to the lip at like 30 miles an hour. Yeah, totally. That was back on that like I think we hiked out to the power lines off of Copper Mountain. Like if you're facing the mountain to all the way to the left yeah, side, like down A or whatever, A and B Woods kind of area. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you come down off of the off the road when you're done. Yep, Joe Bogdansky riding the barfoot right there. Just had a comment on barfoot boards. This yep. was kind of towards the end of barfoot, I want to say. Hi, Cindy. And then you started D23. You were a pro for barfoot. You had a pro model, and then you went to D23 and started it with Ernie. I never. No, I never had oh, a pro didn't. model on okay, barfoot. Okay, my bad. Um, the uh, Greg DeLeo was the... Oh, there's TJ. <laughs> you got a clip. TJ Lise. TJ Lise. I still talk to him. Much. Really? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, the... Uh, I had a... Uh, Greg DeLeo took over as the team manager of Barfoot when I was like... Just when I moved to Colorado. And he's the one who got asked to start Division 23. And uh, he just kind of asked me to come along. And uh, I mean, at the time, it seemed... I, I was... Hanging out with him a lot, it was a really. It just seemed like the right move for me at the time. So. I mean, how lucrative was being a pro back then? Like, were you stacking money, <laughs> like saving up for vacations in Hawaii? I mean, how much money were you making? I think my biggest year, including board royalties and everything, I probably made like thirty grand. Okay. Yeah. And I lost it all through a rave, of course. Of course you did. So. At least you didn't lose there it in Vegas. Go. I mean, it's pretty similar look at look at nate doing flips out of a tree right. and like, like and like you're like oh we got to make a part of this this is going to be a good two minutes of the movie right here people jumping out of trees this is crazy yeah it's pretty it's like pretty good like the super slow-mo 50 50 <laughs> on the uh wood rail and bogdansky and who's this guy look at that champ oh, that's me anyhow Ooh, look at i got special effects I on know. here <laughs> <laughs> the 180 oh, yeah, that's, that's the way I rolled. 180s all day. Now people, now there's like an Instagram page making fun of people who do 180s. Just saying. So uh, yeah, Russell yeah. Winfield and I wouldn't fit in very good anymore. No. Uh, shit. Anyway. Luckily, I don't even do those anymore. So. I don't think anyone does them. I don't even do them. But... <laughs> More heavy metal. Yes. That, that was like the undercurrent of this whole thing. So what, what am I supposed to learn about heavy metal by watching your movie? <laughs> absolutely okay. nothing like absolutely right. nothing more special effects solar yep. eyes fade into todd richards right richards was like a half pipe Tips. king back then look how crappy the half pipe is and look how good he rides it it was really just a kicker that was jason bump i think right nice. there with a long, yeah, hair. long hair bump it's like oh bump was that long hair bump or short hair bump oh that's that's gonna be moran right there yep. i think that was jim moran Who that is. I mean, this is really quite the cast of characters. Oh, this is Andy Davidson and the famed um, spleen break. Oh, yeah, shot. He ruptured, ruptured his spleen. So, of course, I put Nicole Engelrath laughing right. at him. <laughs> mm. Not very. See, I've learned I was an asshole. What can I say? Right. Well, you thought it was funny at the time, and as long as one person laughs, maybe. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. right? Fair enough. That's all down So it. was there any Level theme down. like to this? Like what was like the process of like editing this or putting it together? Was there an idea, like a beginning, a middle, and an end, or was it just like random clips, this scene, that scene, the next scene? I mean, it was honestly all about not following what everybody had done traditionally. Like uh, you know, rider sections. Like we were trying to just make it look all about like here's a bunch of cool tricks that we've all learned to do right now, right. you know? And like, not like, here's this person, we're gonna make you famous, you know? I, I I, think it was just kind of this like collaborative, this is what our scene was about at that time, you know? So. Nice, so this is almost a part for Matt Smith. Yeah, I guess it is. 
It was probably that it was late and we were editing and they were all together on one tape in a row. <laughs> right. I figured it's because you wrote for Bamboo Curtain, one of the sponsors of the movie. <laughs> I mean, we certainly made sure we got our plugs right. in there. But... Of course. Dale Rayberg, <laughs> nice front side air. Just front side three. Disappearing into the... That was a fakey to fakey three, wasn't it? I think it I was think. a fakey to fakey three. I was there that day. Fake. He was wearing like, uh, like overalls, cotton overalls. That's when, by the way, when we were filming this movie, Rowan and Nate and Dale like rode cotton fat pants. Yeah, they right. did. <laughs> and cut all their boards down that year. That was the year everyone cut their boards down. That's right, because prior to this year, all the boards had these long extended rocket shaped noses. And then like yeah. Nate Cole maybe traced a pie plate over the tip of his board and was like, why do yep. we have all this extra nose? And then cut it down and the rest is history. That's the modern shape of snowboards today. Totally. Here, let me bring this up here. Yeah. Carbon tape. Carbon tape. Grabbing a little nose. Grabbing a little Those nose, guys. carving to fakie bros. <laughs> that was Smitty with the, the switch method to, to 180. I mean, that's the thing. It's like these tricks literally range up to maybe 540 degrees of rotation. Right, so they're not even oh, on no, a scale like, with like modern riding. I think, I think Iguchi doing the seven twenties in here was like the first seven twenties anybody was ever doing on in yeah. pipe, like period. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm almost positive because it was when we were up at uh we I mean it was when we'd go up in the summers up to um, up to uh to Mount Hood and everyone would just crank on half pipe tricks all day. Right. Long. Now, were you more of a half-pipe specialist, free-riding specialist? What did you consider yourself as a rider? I mean, when I was, like, a kid and I was in the junior categories, I was great on the half-pipe. So I always enjoyed riding half-pipe, but I think I turned more into, like, a free-rider, basically. Yeah. I mean, back then, though, there were so many half-pipes, like, at every resort. So, really, you could be a half-pipe rider and not specialize. Let's say today, to be a half-pipe yeah, rider, you got to, like, fly to half-pipes and train only at those half-pipes and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I don't envy what these kids have to do these days. I mean, we weren't scared that every trick we were trying to learn was going to break a bone if we didn't make it, right. you know? I, <clears throat> this is the uh, the mandatory skateboard section of every snowboard I mean, video. And, but by the way, it's like just as these tricks weren't going to break us if we didn't make them, like the riding wasn't lucrative enough for the pros to really make it so you wanted to risk breaking a bone every time. I just don't, I mean, it's like you watch progression of sports though, and you think anybody who's involved in a sport at the time they're involved in it just can't picture how it could possibly get any crazier. Yeah. And then it just does, yeah. you know? I mean, like we thought we were doing crazy stuff and now it's like stuff that like kids learn in their first year, you know? I mean, really, <laughs> it's like, oh, Chris Franson. Look at little Chris Franson. But it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, within two years, probably any new rider could learn the tricks in this movie. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of funny. I got it. When we get to there's a skateboarding part in here with this kid Sammy up in uh, British Columbia. The Whistler. And I swear, I don't know where it is, but oh, this is that Jason Bass kid. He was fucking Bass. Good. Yeah, Jason Bass. Yeah. Bass. I mean, look at. I mean, he's doing like crazy technical tricks even. 30 years ago, you know, in France and when he was like seven. Yeah. I mean, this was kind of like you putting your exclamation point or like, no, we're freestyle. We're influenced by skateboarding straight up. Yeah, totally. Okay. So this is, Whistler. yeah, so that's a Gucci. Yeah. It's up in Whistler. So I met this kid up there, this kid, Sammy, and he was doing, uh, he was doing shifties mm -hmm. and it was like right when shifties were just the new skateboard trick. And me, I was like, oh shit, I can do a cool trick and I don't even have to grab my board. So man, I was all over that. So I, I mean, I'm going to claim, I'm going out on a limb right now. I'm claiming it publicly. Publicly. I, I was the first one doing shifties on a snowboard. I'm going to claim wow. it. Wow. Totally going to. Old claim, Steve. I like that. I like that. Going out I mean, on it a limb. should be something. And I should be ashamed of it, basically. <laughs> you but guys feel I free to leave your comments on here. Steve will see those here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dare someone prove it better. But see, he was doing these dope shifty, yeah. you know, shifty 
Nikes, and I was like, that looks awesome. And that's when you could still drop your knee to your board if you wanted. Oh, there's Mac Dog. Oh, yeah. Filming Brushy. That's how I got Brushy footage. I'd have to, like, tag on to the Mac Dog team. Right. I mean, it was pretty funny. I was thinking about this last night. Like, literally in this movie, you have the Mac Dog crew, obviously your crew, but also John Krieg. Literally in Breckenridge at this time, it was like anywhere you looked, there was like a crew of film riders, whatever, trying to make movies in this scene. Because yeah, word yeah, got out really. that jibbing was starting here. <laughs> There's Donnie here. Donnie here. Oh, Richards. TR. With the, with the rare bail on our I front know, side 360. I know. That was like the first time I've seen Richards crash, maybe, in 30 years. I think <laughs> I think that was part of the fun of doing this movie, too, was just making everyone look like human, kind of, yep. you know? like Matt Smith with the glamour hair. Look at that stuff. Flowing. He definitely had unique style for back in those days. Uh, uh, he was so smooth. He was... He never really got as big as I think he ever should have, you know? He was he was so good. I think a lot of people pretty much, like, either it just wasn't lucrative enough or for whatever reason, the people who were really good at that time kind of moved on, you know? <laughs> There's SD smashing one of my old boards just for the purpose of putting it on video. Is that, is that why you did it, basically? Yeah, we were just being dumb. Look at that disaster reaver. You can't do those anymore because you're going to like end up no. 20 feet into the flat bottom. <laughs> right? That was a super fun trick, though, back in the day when you were doing four or five foot airs. Yeah, that's sick. That invert's awesome. Oh, switch back 180. That's Rowan when he was still on a Burton board. Really? Yeah, because some of the stuff we started early, filming early in that year and everyone was on like... I think everyone picked up the joyride stuff kind of mid-year. There's Trevor Graves. Yeah. This is like the first Here's rail the session. First, the first hand railing ever, as far so, as I know. Street riding. I got a lot of started first in ever one place here. and one place only right here in this video. This is the first street rail ever ridden right here. I, I'm pretty sure that is the first. I'm pretty street sure rail actually ever. too. I mean, prove me wrong, right? Prove me wrong. That, I mean. I remember these guys coming back that night and telling me they were pushing each other at a railing in the middle of town in Breck. And I was like, what, what are you doing? And they're like, we're doing handrails on snowboards. And I'm like, cool, let's go film it. <laughs> it's pretty funny just looking at like everyone hitting the same features as well. Like all the crew, like you'd basically set up at this one spot and you get see everyone kind of do this one thing to see what kind of game everyone had for that hit. Well, I think everyone everyone was like pretty supportive of each other and pushing each other like crazy at that point. Yeah. But we just we just run lines and I mean it was all about Copper Mountain that year, man. I mean like Copper was was the spot for all this stuff. Like this is all at yeah. that little, you know, lunch yeah. spot in Copper. Yeah, it's funny, like, this oh. is the year that I decided to get involved with the media. I was trying to get, like, a great video part to be a pro rider, spectacular and whatnot. And then I kept riding yeah. with Nate Cole, and he was just, like, hands down better than me. I would never be that good. I just knew it. And I was like, huh, this... I'm not giving up snowboarding, so what do I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys are so good, though. But that rail right here, this is, like... This was like insane at the yeah. time, like absolutely insane. We couldn't even believe these guys were doing it. Yeah. I mean, and these are all wood rails, you know? I mean, like, oh, this was dope too. I forgot about this one. That was like some condo complex off of like four o'clock run in Breckenridge. Yeah. <laughs> A little more heavy metal. <laughs> Judgment. <laughs> Dansky, Back yeah. to the the super booters, the freestyle jumps at Breck. Yeah, trying to mix it all up. Yeah, I mean there there was just so much good footage to come out of those because literally they were like the first like super kickers that we had ever seen. Yeah, man. I mean nobody thought about jumping off of those things. I mean, like things that big at the time. Yeah, and it's crazy because almost all of this stuff was filmed either inbounds at resorts or like on Loveland Pass, but it was all in Summit County. Oh, a little bit yeah, of a, a little bit of Whistler. 
Yeah, a couple. I think some stuff from a trip I did with uh, with Swires up to the Northwest at one point with Trevor. But that's about it. Yeah, nothing's nothing's like crazy. But it's all. I mean, at the time it was small and technical. Right. You know, it wasn't like. At the same time, there's other people filming all the big mountain stuff. You know that we just weren't even remotely interested in. <laughs> Look at that log. Oh, no. <laughs> that could have been me actually. I remember that. I remember Rowan doing that trick. Yeah. Oh yeah, John, John again telling you what's up. Here's the coach, the... Dude, that was so there sick for back then. You're like, how, how is that possible? That's impossible. Look at the fist bump, ready? Oh wait, I didn't show it the second time. I mean, he freaking had the fist pump going. And oh he yeah, stuck he was like thing. claim. <laughs> but it was okay to claim back then, you know, because you were. Pumped. Oh, dude, it was huge. Oh, that guy's killing it. Only skier in the movie, aside from the little kid on the cat track. <laughs> Matt Smith, he was he was good all around. He was a good pipe rider, good at everything. Yeah, Rochester team, Rochester crew there. Yep. And so, did he have the board with Dale? Did they have the Eldorado? Oh, Richie. Yeah, they did that together. Yep. Oh boy. Totally. So this is my childhood buddy Richie Whitlock right here. Richie is now a monk in Nepal. And so, actually, I got I got to um, come correct with you right here because I talked to Richie about two days ago. And I was like, man, I'm doing a, a, uh, a watch party on Seventh Richie. Year. And I was like, you going to tune in? And he was like kind of bummed. And I was like, what? Why are you bummed, dude? And he was like, because they made fun of me in this movie. And I was like, no, dude, you're tough as nails, Richie, because he did crash hard a lot. Oh, dude, I love Richie. That, like, bums me out if he was bummed about this um we all had respect for richie because it's like he would crash like that and you'd be like there's no way he's getting up but yeah. then he would like ride hard yeah then here's like him sticking all this big stuff um no richie was the best he had good style he was like one of the nicest people i've ever known in my life like i love richie i hope dude richie if you're watching this i have nothing but love for you there was never i oh i feel horrible if he thinks that that was like intentionally just totally meant to Oh, that feels terrible. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't worry too much about it because I did talk to Richie and I'm actually going to talk to him again. I think I might do an interview with him, like a path to find out yeah. like how he got to where he is today because it's just amazing from being in this movie to being a monk in Nepal, yeah. right? It's like, how do you make that transition? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it, it actually makes sense for me with him. I'll yeah, here's the in run, like the sketchy, sketchy in run. Look at this. But it's like, boom. <laughs> Yeah, like he's the only one who made that landing. I remember. Everybody else came up short I of it. Remember, it was because of that in run. That's why you showed the in run. Yeah, yeah, Rowan, killing it. It was Rippy again. Richie, I love you. <laughs> Saying that out. Yeah, you should know that, Richie. People love you. You're respected and loved. Oh my gosh, like a million times. He's probably one of the most memorable people from right living in before me. Yeah. yeah. Totally. There's Joe smoothing it up. Some more special effects. <laughs> I remember editing this video though, just being like, holy shit, when you're doing three seconds at a time, that's a lot of tricks you gotta throw in to make a 30 minute video even. How you know? long was the editing process? Oh, How long it. did it take you to like start when you sat down with all this like boxes of tapes to the time you like left with a mastered copy? I think we spent like, I want to say we spent like four days maybe in Connecticut editing, something like that. So you basically knew all the clips, you had kind of gone through everything and you kind of just assembled it. Yeah, pretty much. There's Gus. That's Gus from oh, Game nice. of Curtain. <laughs> and of course you saw Joe on the same jump, killing it. Yeah, yeah. TR, smooth. Yeah. Todd's saying horrible things in Italian. Is he? Yep. Yep. This is when Todd was like one of the best pipe riders in the world, I would say. And for many yeah, years after. Yeah, I mean, afterwards. I know. I don't know if he had won the U.S. Open yet. There's a U.S. Open. I don't think he'd won in '92, '93. I don't think he'd won yet. Maybe he had. No. There's my one obligatory shot of myself in my own video. How many shots are of you are in here? Probably that's me. Probably like. I don't know. There's probably like 15 clips okay. of me in here. So. Good. Well, it's yeah. nice to know the guy you got on the box cover also got 15 clips in the movie. <laughs> hey, I, 
I had to get my uh, photo incentives I, off that yeah, box I, cover. I, I saw uh, Joe W. posted that earlier today. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, that's too funny. Uh, yeah, here's my little, here's the credit part. I figured, you know, we thought at the end we'd give everyone credit and tried to, we tried to do a little, like, lifestyle shot of each right. person mixed in with their riding. So, you know, made them people. Right. And so the Todd Richards shot was actually already shown, but posturized. Now, the real shot. Yeah. <laughs> That's the uh, that's the Coke machine outside Blazing Saddles. The talking Coke machine outside Blazing Saddles, where I paid three hundred dollars a month to have my own studio in uh, in walking distance to the lifts of Breckenridge. How Breckenridge. crazy is it that like back then I lived in like the first year I think I paid three hundred bucks a month in rent. Second year I paid a hundred and twenty bucks a month in rent. You know. <laughs> yeah, we, I remember at one point. Swires, I don't even remember. We had like five of us in a one bedroom because we knew we were never there. Yeah. <laughs> we all paid like eighty-seven dollars a month or something like that. I mean, that's what it was about the low overhead, right? Going riding and having low overhead, trying to work as little as possible and spend as much time on snow. Yeah, we had no money. The triple stump. Oh, yeah. I love that. I mean, just so many classic clips in here, and also first cheese wedges, first like street rail riding maybe ever in snowboarding yeah so that's i think some pretty important history right here did you you made a movie after yeah. this didn't you like one more yeah i did clone, i did clones the next right. year it was called um and there's some cool stuff in it but i think uh i think i kind of like forced that one a little bit more than this one you know i mean hey when you get up to um video watch number 37 we can bring out clones if you really want okay. to um but that was like more of the Tarquin footage and, you know, it's crazy how much stuff changed in one year, right. you know, but there's a Gucci with a one and a half to face plant into the Hood River. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is really a who's who of kind of up and coming freestyle riders of that era. Totally. Jim Moran was so good. So too. good. There's Dougie. Dougie, rest in peace. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Some asshole. Uh, that guy. <laughs> Look at the hair. <laughs> what prompted? What uh, prompted is, the short dread? This was, this was my classic. Did you? I'm not good the, enough I got for your video for this video. <laughs> Terry A. Hawkinson. You're like. I'm not sure he ever thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. But you did, it, and as long as one person matters, it's funny. So. But what so, are you gonna so do? you had this kind of crazy haircut back then. Short dreads. Where did that come from? What inspired you to have this totally distinctive haircut? Was that a, a straight edge hardcore thing? No, I don't even know what inspired me to dread my hair out. Like, I have no idea why I decided to do it. But yeah, I rocked it for like a couple of years, I think. Ironic. Because it definitely, it got longer. But, I was gonna yeah. say, ironically, as, as many credits of people skating as actual skating in the movie. <laughs> Uh, oh, Alexi was in there. I forgot about Alexi. Alexi. Yeah, Nix. Chris Nix. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot Nix was in this yeah, I saw one. Yeah, one, I saw the one well, the one clip of Nix on his exactly, powder stick. Exactly, exactly. But it's like, man, that's cool to see Nix in a movie. Oh, I don't even remember seeing Boyer Bob in there. Blair. Boyer was like one of my heroes. He was a like, funny guy, as John a, Boyer. I just like, talk about style. That dude was awesome. Ooh little crash there by matt smith slaznik oh i had slaznik skateboarding in there that's what's funny wait he wasn't even you spelled his name totally wrong too well what are you gonna know. do didn't have the internet to, to, to spell check. change it plus you put this whole thing together in four days yeah so don't go back and i was 18 right. what are you gonna do it's pretty ambitious actually for an 18 year old to be like i'm gonna make a movie right because the equipment was really expensive at least for an 18 year old and, you know, all the competitors who were out there were making like 16 millimeter movies, high budgets, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so it's like this was actually something pretty unique at the time to just be using videotape, you know. I thought I was hilarious. Look at all these credits. I forgot about that. I have Lord of Lords jaw. <laughs> and I think we thought that if you gave credits to the people that you rip their music off of, it was OK. Right. Yeah, I'm promoting so it. I'm promoting you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Bob Gilly, USSTC. I know pretty XLG and NFA. Pretty funny. 
<laughs> so if I sent twenty one ninety five to PO Box fifty eighty, who would get that now? I don't know. Whoever's got that PO Box in Breck would be stoked to get the money now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's let's end out with some audio from the closing shot at the beach. Chris Wires, <laughs> Nate Cole. High five him with a cane. I think I have that shot in here. Maybe I don't. Oh darn it! I think I clipped the video before that. Oh well. Sorry about that. Oh, now I'm now I'm way under our comments here. Maybe I'll go back to this one. Okay. Man, what an incredible movie there, Steve. <laughs> so Thank you. 30 years later, approximately, right? Um, what do you want people to take away from that? Now that they look at back at that movie through the sands of time, what should be the takeaway? I don't know if anyone needs to take anything away from that. It's just, it was purely meant for entertainment. I think it actually, I'll take that back. At the time, it had great purpose. Um, at this point, uh, I mean, for me, it's just a good walk down memory lane, see a bunch of people that I don't talk to too much anymore. Um, yeah, at the time, though, I think it was just about, like, showing people that we were trying to just be different than what was the standard in the industry at the time. Yep. So when you look at like snowboard movies that come out today or edits that come out today, does does you being a filmmaker, does that affect your perception of how you like digest content now? Not with film because I didn't really pursue it any further than those first two snowboard movies, you know. Um, I kind of thought I was going to go that direction. <laughs> I guess I thought I was going to do a lot of things. Um so yeah, I don't think I got deep enough into like like directing or um, editing or producing films that that became sort of uh, one of my main things in life. So I can be pretty objective at this point. Yeah. Okay. So who was yeah. the best person to work with in that movie? The person that you were just stoked if they wanted to go out shooting that day? It didn't work that way with that movie. We were all like we were all riding together anyway. Those were just my friends at the time. I mean, there was no like, hey, let me call up Dale and see if he's available today to go shoot video. It was just like, we all lived together. We all traveled together. I mean- Hey Dale, you're one of five people who live in this studio apartment. You wanna go <laughs> riding again? I mean, yeah, there was nothing like that. I mean, it was just, that was the most organically made video like that you could possibly make. There was. Nothing planned about it. There was, you know, absolutely nothing like that. It was just, it just happened. Right. Okay. Happened, so, you know, I mean, even how, how did you distribute this movie? Like, I mean, there's a lot of, it's, it's pretty challenging to make a movie. What was your like distribution? How did you get it out there? Because I know people all over the world saw this movie. Well, that's where <clears throat> like Barfoot and Bamboo Curtain helped me with that. Mm -hmm. um, so those guys, uh, like, Gus and John got me Japanese distribution, you know, and we sold, we sold quite a, quite a lot in Japan actually. Um, and then I think, uh, I can't even remember who was distributing Barfoot at the time, but, uh, they picked it up for us and pushed it through their distribution for America through the U S. So, um, I mean, it was pretty easy to sell actually. Um, I couldn't even, I can't even come up with a number off the top of my head of how many we sold, but, um, I do know that I made, <laughs> I made, I think I made more money that year making that video though, than I made snowboarding. Right. Yeah. I mean, people don't understand that today because there is no profit model in video, but back then you would make a video and then reproduce the copies. People would buy the individual copies and then you would get a commission off every copy that sold. Oh yeah. I mean, I, or I would just, I was wholesaling them. I mean, I paid to have them produced. And then I just wholesale them to the distributors and then they, you know, they, so, you know, it gets its markup. It's like anything else, but like, I mean, I don't know. We saw at the end there, I was selling for 20 bucks. I was probably, I pro they probably cost me like five bucks each to make or something like that. And I was probably selling them for 11 or something like that. You know? so, right. But. Okay. So final question out of the whole movie, what was your favorite shoot, your favorite day, you know, your favorite session, whatever, like the, the best part of like making that movie, your highlight. Oh man. I don't know if there's a day. I think it would just be more like, like the, I think the stump runs were like, were like the most unique thing at the time about everything. 
Shit, man, I don't know, though, because then you got, like, railings that were all, like, crazy and new. Like, I don't know. I don't think there was much... I think maybe, like, the powder shots were maybe the most boring out of all of them, I would say, you know? <laughs> yeah. And the rest was all pretty cool to do, so... I think that's the year we all discovered powder, though. It'd be like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. <laughs> well, you grew up on the East Coast. You have no idea yeah. what powder is. <laughs> I know, I know. So You get it's pretty, 20, pretty 20 amazing. The snow is a curse because you can't move because the hills are so flat. <laughs> I, know. I think I think a lot of people like the first stopping point was Colorado and then Utah and wherever. Yeah, you know. except me. I just stayed here. All those yeah. all those sellouts and moved off to San Diego. You know, I think a lot of people actually in that movie moved to San Diego to away from the mountains actually. But you stayed in Denver, so that's respectable. Oh. It's cool. <laughs> uh, and so, what what are you doing now? Like, what what are, what's like occupying your time? You got kids, a family. You know, 30 years on, past snowboarding, what are you up to? Yeah, I mean, things are good. I've, I, I've been married for 16 years now. I've got two kids. I've got a nine-year-old daughter, a five-year-old boy, um, which is by far the best part of my life no matter what. Um, I started a design company, so for the last 22 years now, I've been doing graphic design um, kind of primarily in the... Um, in the music world, you know, we do a lot of music festival art. We do a lot of art for um, for artists and, and that kind of stuff, um, which is in the current climate maybe the worst thing possible, but uh, but so be it. Um, and then uh, I still go out and DJ a bunch. I mean, which is again a story of who you know that allows me to still do that. <laughs> okay, what was the last time you went riding? Yeah, uh, I did go twice this year, okay. but. Uh, I am insanely inflexible at this point uh, to where it's disturbing. And uh, most of the time I just spend cruising around with my kids at this point, you know? So, I mean, my last day in the park was probably 10 years ago. You okay. Know? <laughs> right. On. right on. Did, you, did you teach your kids how to ride yet? No, nah, they're skiers. <laughs> oh, the curse of the no, pro I mean, snowboarder. I see. <laughs> there's uh, there's <laughs> actually, I can't, I, there's a couple of stories behind it, but uh, one being, um, I really just went, I got them up there when they were like three and I just wanted them to like the experience of going to the mountain. And uh, I know that snowboarding is more frustrating at first. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure they liked the experience first, you know, right. my daughter's already asking me when she can start snowboarding. So okay. I'll, I'll probably let her do that too. But then I, I had the eye-opening moment of uh, I was talking to uh, someone uh, who's in the industry that I still know who was like, dude, we're the parents now. Like, we snowboard and we're the old people who snowboard. We're not cool anymore. I'm like, Are, the kids all want to ski because we're the old people who snowboard. And I'm like, wait, no, that can't be true. We're not that old. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's kind of crazy because I remember when I was like 20, looking at people in the snowboard industry and ski industry who are like in their thirties and forties and be like, man, those people are like ancient. Right. But here we are, you know, Shit, man. pushing, pushing 50, screw the forties and thirties. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is I keep trying. That's, that's the bottom line. I'm, I haven't given up. So dude, it's so great still. I mean, I, I, I love it. I love the culture still. I mean, I, I, there's plenty of days that I regret that I didn't stick around in the industry on a, on a deeper level. Yeah. Well, I mean, your, your impact was definitely significant. I mean, seventh year really was a movie scene around the world. And I think had its influence well beyond Colorado or wherever it was seen. Yeah. Well, it was fun to do. And like I said, the one thing I got to say is it really wasn't like, I did not make that movie. That was a, that was a collaborative idea of everybody who was in Summit County that year. I mean, it was, it was everyone together coming up with this, this whole kind of sport changing year, I feel like. And, uh, I just happened to be the one who decided I would hold the camera on certain days, you know? Did you ever regret that? Like being the camera guy? No, I mean, I think I was always pretty aware of like where I stood in the snowboarding industry, which was like, again, I mean, I knew once I was like, not just a 14 year old who could do J tears that, uh, I was pretty average. <laughs> so I just always tried to keep myself involved, uh, in as many ways as I could just cause I loved it, you know? So. Cool. Cool. We're right on. Well, Hey, thanks for being on the watch party. I mean, that of course uh, is near and dear to my heart. Seventh year. 
So I, I really do appreciate you coming on and, and sharing some stories from uh, from making one of the uh, the most important freestyle snowboard movies. In that, it was one of the first. So thank well, you. thank you. That was super fun. Yeah, I appreciate it. Right on. It's good to bring up the memories. I right love on. it. Cool. Well, thanks for being on, Steve, and I will talk to you again soon. Sounds good. Right on. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Watch Party here at the Snowboard Project. And we're going to continue making videos, doing watch parties, and a whole bunch of other stuff. We, man, we have got a lot of work going on for this season. It's going to be an amazing year. We're really excited to bring some new ideas to like, like the watch party. So you guys, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please hit that bell. That'll uh, let you know when we have new videos coming out. And, of course, please go to our Patreon page. It means the world to us. If you donate a little bit of money, you go to patreon.com slash the snowboard project, and you can learn a little bit more there. So thanks, you guys, for tuning in to another edition of Watch Party. Thanks, you guys, for leaving comments there. And, yeah, we'll see you with another Watch Party party soon i've talked to scott stevens about Susie greenberg i've talked to dave sioni about roadkill we got some stuff coming down the pipeline for watch parties so stay tuned to the snowboard project channel on youtube thanks guys we'll see you next time